morning where I'll celebrate that triumph with composer Mark. Maybe. Maybe. You could have never come up with that in a million years, no. and you know it. I know it. <laughs> I'm doing one now for the news that everyone's loving. 25th, 1975. Yeah, 75. Eight right. years ago. Woo! Remember the first time you heard that show about it? I was in California, and I, I had been a friend of uh, Michael Bennett. We'd, we'd done a few shows, not that I'd written or anything like that, but I was the, I was what they call a rehearsal pianist. Now, a rehearsal pianist for the few, first few weeks is very important because, you know, does. after that, he becomes the gopher, you know, and you go, go for this, <laughs> go for that, go here, do that. So I was like that, and I, I admired Michael. I thought he was, you know, wonderful. And I got this phone call from him, mm -hmm. and he said, I have an idea for a show, and, you know, we've worked together before, and I want you to come in and see if you like this idea. Right. And I was doing pretty well in, you know, in Hollywood, and so my agent was very upset because, I mean, he was saying, what are you going there for now when things are going good in Hollywood? I said, Michael Bennett, genius, I'm going in because he's got something good. Your agent wanted you to go someplace else, right? <laughs> <laughs> go for it, go for it. <laughs> go, go for it, hey, 10%, you know? So you said that was better than the outline so, no, of course. No, so what happened was, yeah, well, he not, only, he not only outlined it, he had, had tapes. He had had sessions, long night sessions with dancers, okay? And they had, he had recorded this, which they had said it was okay. And he had these long tapes of stories, their life stories, okay, what it is to be a dancer. And what he then did, taking all those 24 hours of tapes, he had a little, like, excerpts for me. He said, here's a story, here's a story, here's a story, what do you think? Mm -hmm. And can this be a musical? Mm -hmm. No kidding. Yeah. So you heard each story, and from those right. stories you composed... Well, I st well the, first of all, Ed Kleban, who did the lyrics mm -hmm. to begin with, did a lot of talking and uh, know, knowing everyone. I'll tell you one, one of the most interesting things about Course Line that hasn't been spoken about, and God knows they're doing it on every show now, you know? Yeah. You know what I mean? Cooking with Alice. Let me tell you about Course Line. You know, <laughs> hey, we you know? just did one of those. Oh, you did that. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay, right. I mean, they're every, you know. But what was interesting, what was really difficult about it that most people don't know was the original people who told the stories, right? Mm -hmm. You would have thought that obviously those are the obvious people that now should play themselves when we do their the stories, cast, they, they should be yeah. part of the cast, right? Because, I mean, someone tells you a story that you make sure. a musical number out of. Yeah. You would think that that person is the perfect person to now do their story. It was unbelievable that a lot of the people didn't get to do their role that they had talked about. Mm -hmm. that were they the, reimbursed for their story? They were. They, there is a wonderful thing that Michael did, which, which was, in fact, that everyone who was in part of the workshop and who was in part of that f whole thing, uh, you know, has has a, a slight piece of the show. Oh, I don't know. Nice. You know I don't know great. how much a piece is, but after, very often. but after eight years, it's nice. You know? Sure. Yeah. So then you go into a workshop. You, we did you... a workshop, and the workshop became a four and a half hour show with about three songs, because we were always the the question on course line, which was a labor of love. The question in the collaboration was, where do you stop talking and where do you sing? Mm -hmm. Okay. And to find that, you you to fine tune that, right? You have to do it by putting it on its feet, looking at it, and going. Yeah, I think we should sing that. No, I don't think we should sing that. And that became, slowly but surely, a four and a half hour show with a lot of dialogue yeah. <laughs> and three songs. And slowly but surely, it became a, Cut. you know, this, whatever. And then from workshop, do you go off-Broadway or to Broadway? Well, we had, we had two workshops. We had a, a workshop, then everything stopped. Then we did another workshop. See, the first workshop I wrote... <laughs> then the second workshop I wrote... <laughs> then by the time I put it together, it was... And if you believe that... <laughs> Yeah, let's hear it, folks. Come on. What a... <laughs> let's take a look at the tote boy. We've got four days left. He can't stop. He can't stop. I, I, thought, I, I think he's been pretty good today. He's, got, he's like, been a good boy. you got to keep him on the subject. Uh, no tote boy. No, tope no Jerry okay. Lewis telethon. No, I, I, okay. I, okay, so anyway, what happened was so now we're into the second <laughs> workshop, right? Now we look at it. Now what happens is we now go off Broadway, and I want to tell you an interesting story, if I may, about one song. Yeah. We go off Broadway, and we think we're ready, right? There is a song where you have the girl who, in fact, is the original, uh, who was the original cast who did a song which I will call TNA. Mm -hmm. Pam Blair. And Pam Blair. Right. I won't call it what it is because then you'll be bleeped off the air. Well, right. You never know. No, but anyway. <laughs> right. So anyway, so this song was called TNA, and we thought it was hysterically funny, you know? So we come to watch it and everything, like that, and it doesn't get a laugh. First couple of previews, no laugh. And I, I can't believe it. About the eighth preview, Michael Bennett said to Ed Cleaver and I, he says, this song doesn't get a laugh pretty soon. He says, then, the song's out, you're gonna have to write another song. I said, Michael, I don't know. I said, I think I know it's funny. You know what I mean? Look at the tie, you know? I said, I think I know it's funny. It's just a quickie, I wanna just keep him up. Yes, you know? I know, I know. Because I'm trying to be straight. I'm stay with us, stay okay. with us. I'm straying with it, I'm straying with it. You mean it? Welcome back. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> sorry. Whoa, well, sorry. Come on. Okay. I'm sorry. No, no. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. You think. You're talking about a dancer's body. Okay, so we're okay. doing a song about a dancer's, dancer's body. body, right? Thank you. Right. So doing a song about a dancer's body, and it's not getting a laugh, right? So I said to Ed, this is absolutely true, every night that we went into this theater, which was off-Broadway, uh, Joe Papp's theater, uh, uh, in Lafayette Street, I said, 
every night we used to go in, we used to go in the backstage, you know, never went in the front. We used to sit down, and I said, we're doing something wrong. I said, let's go in the front way. Maybe we're, maybe we're missing something. Maybe we're not seeing it the way the audience sees it. Right. So we walked in, and for the first night after 10 nights, we picked up a program, something we'd never done for 10 days. And what do we see in the program? We see the title of the song, T and A, right? Mm -hmm. About the dancer's body. Mm -hmm. and Shoulders right, and her sh ankles. Exactly, right. And I, we, Ed and I turned to each other and said, there's the problem. We're giving away the joke. We're telling the, the title. And that's, that's right. why the song was immediately changed. The song, in terms of the title, was changed to uh, Dance 10 Looks 3, which is what the program has said well, for eight said, years. Right, but everybody that's still right. refers yeah, to exactly. it as DNA. Exactly. But at least in the beginning, what happened was people didn't know, where, you know, that oh. it was, you know, didn't give away the joke. Do and you, that made theater history. Do you have a favorite song in that whole score? I do, actually, believe it or not. Could you play it out for us? You won't believe which one it is, because you're going to think it was What I Did For Love, but it isn't What I Did For Love. Uh, well, we're going to come back with Pam Blair and Michael yes. Stewart and James Kirkwood, who wrote the book, and uh, some of the cast members, as Marvin plays his favorite, his favorite song from A Chorus Line. Right back in a moment. Oh, yes, I like that. I love this song. Yeah. yeah. We're joined now, along with Marvin Hamlis, by Pamela Blair, who played Val, the TNA gal, in the original chorus of the chorus line. We also have Michael Stewart, who has now went on to producing, uh -huh. producing a big hit called Nine. And James Kirkwood, the other side of Cindy, who compo wrote the book, That's along right. with uh, Michael, uh, co-wrote, along Nicole. with uh, Nicholas, Nicholas Dante. Nicholas Dante, yes. yes. Nice to have you all here. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Are you all excited about this? Oh, Just so much that I'm wearing rubber pants. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm wearing my support bra. Hey, give me a song! He's you taking a chance with rubber bands. Taking a chance with a song! But when I, I walked in the uh, oh, rehearsal God. at the Schubert Theater the other day, mm -hmm. and I opened the door, and there were 350 dancers, about 10 lines on the stage, oh, and a company yeah. down each aisle right. doing the well, finale. And by the time I closed the door, I was yeah. in tears. He's brought something very interesting. Yeah. Can you kind of roll that out? Sure. You can't see it, but this is everyone. This is everybody. all of the companies of <laughs> oh, oh, the yeah. It's a lovely poster. If only I had longer arms. <laughs> Stretch me. Go Give me some days. stretching music. And about 350 of those people are Can returning tonight there. Yeah. from today. Yeah. Yeah. Super, huh? yeah. right. And they have come from all over the country. And not only that, some from Japan, I think some from Buenos Aires. And I oh, met two kidding. girls, twins from Germany, who had been in the show. We won't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> How many companies actually And they're doing anything they want to do, by the way. <laughs> they they want to sing the, this show, fine as not, hey. And you know? they're doing it in their own language. Isn't that exciting? Yes. Well, what are you yeah. doing right now, Pam? Right now, I'm doing a soap called Loving on uh -huh, ABC, terrific. having a great time. How long did you stay with Chorus Line? Two and a half years. From the beginning. I huh? stayed until my breasts fell. <laughs> <laughs> She's the TNA gal. And it was time made to leave. the song famous. <gasps> yeah. I, a tacky thing to say on live TV. No. no. I, we can't say it, it, you say it every day on your soap. <laughs> I was but always afraid they were going to bombard me with melons and oranges. I'd say to Marvin, but I, there's nothing there, and I'm singing about this. How sad. He said, honey, you're so frightened. Something else is performing, and that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> what role did you play? Gregory Gardner. Gregory yes. Gardner. Did you, do you remember your audition for that role? I did an audition for that role. I got a call on a Monday night from Michael Bennett saying, would you like to do uh, a new show called The Chorus Line? He had already done a workshop. I had not performed in 10 years. I said, I'll be there with my dancing shoes on tomorrow morning. Anyway. No kidding. 10-year layout, huh? Well, I'd been choreographing and directing at that mm. point and costume designing. Right. Did you all right. know you had a hit on your hands at the time? Or was it a, or was it a rocky beginning at the very, I had very a, start? I had a very strong sniff that it was going to be a hit. I didn't think it was going to go for nine years. or, mm -hmm. And I can't even believe it's nine years. Mm -hmm. Can you? Mm -hmm. I would say five, would, six Do you remember years, in the right. beginning when the limos would pull up downtown, this little funky, yeah. at that time it was considered funky because off-off Broadway wasn't as hot as it is now. Mm -hmm. And the limos would pull up and that's what was so incredibly exciting and frightening and Joanne Woodward and Paul Newman and all these incredible sure. people coming. Remember Word of mouth. Well, that's it was right. weird because the jungle drums started beating after the first preview yeah. and suddenly everybody in the business showed up. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look out in that audience, there'd be Garson mm -hmm. Kane and Ruth Gordon, mm -hmm. Ingrid Berg. So what does that tell you when, you when you're involved with something that is cast with unknowns and True stories. Well, it tells you that some, that the audience cared mm -hmm. about the dancers and had empathy for chorus dancers. And a lot of people said, "Who's going to care about a show that just talks about the chorus dancers' lives if you have no stars?" 
Well, it worked out that they did, didn't it? Thank yeah. God. Yeah. I think it was so important that you didn't have any stars, too. It was. It was. Because they would have only detracted from what you were doing. And also, I think the idea that we all decided to do it as realistically as we could and mm -hmm. not do a glitzy, glamorous Broadway musical that uh, kind of deified the musical, like a Warner Brothers film, yeah. you know, where the star breaks her leg uh, the mm -hmm. day before mm -hmm. opening and they give it to the end of study and she looks at a sheet of music <laughs> and sings the first two lines and throws it over her shoulder and, and finishes it. the number and is there suddenly you go. a big star. <laughs> yeah. Is that why they're having so much trouble making this a film? I think they've been having trouble making a film because I think it scares a lot of people. I mean, yeah. it's like, you know, you're, all of a sudden you're, you're playing with a lot of hot fire. But sure. I, I must say, I, I heard the latest rumor. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, you know. It's hey. rumor time. <laughs> no, no. Hey, I'm staying, I've been staying classy. You notice I didn't interrupt anyone? I was good. Did you know? Outside of the rubber pants. <laughs> <It's bigger laughs> like I couldn't resist the rubber pants. But aside from that, I've been real nice. Nice, nice. Stayed away from well, her stuff. I could have done a lot of stuff. <laughs> when, when, you, when she says the grapefruits, I could have done 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, you know, but, 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 I, but I'm told that supposedly there's a script now that is, is the first really good script that they've had on it, and hopefully within, what, a year and a half to two years, maybe. Oh, they've worked mm -hmm. a long time on it. Now that. they're working on trying to get a right title for it, you know? But <laughs> so, <laughs> so maybe the fact that it hasn't been done has, has worked to our advantage. The mystique of it all, yes. And yes. also no. kept the uh, kept the show running on Broadway. I think, exactly. I think the empathy factor in, in a yeah. show is what, what, what yeah. finally makes a show. I mean, there, you see, yes. it's not really about dancers. I mean, it's about dancers' lives, but then it becomes about all your lives. And the competition. Yeah. And, and I remember always saying that, Michael used to say, everyone's on the line. It's not just dancers who are on the line. It's right. We're all on the line. Yeah. You know what, I mean? what will happen to the chorus line when it goes off Broadway, Marvin? What will they do? I don't know what they're going to do if it's ever going to go off Broadway or if they're going to just stay on forever. Heard, <laughs> will I've they heard, take it to off Broadway? Or no, they, I've, heard, I've heard rumors that maybe because the show doesn't have that high an overhead because you don't have to pay $10,000 or $20,000 yes, to right. a star and have limos and right. all of the perks. And the authors that, are now on a formula. Which helps yeah, that on and we're on a royalties kind of sliding basis mm -hmm. that it might move to a smaller theater sometime, mm -hmm. a somewhat smaller house. And run or, forever. And run forever. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Really well, look what happened to all of you. You won the Pulitzer Prize for it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, Stewart did. became the big star producer. I do tell <laughs> And you became, you know, uh, one of uh, soap opera's biggest hits, Love. <gasps> well, whatever happened to you, Marvin? <laughs> I'm just trying to make a living. It's a downhill. Because Marvin's got, you've got two Marvin. projects coming out yourself. Well, I've got one right now. With, well, you that? want to do it? Hey, What's well, that? Well, that is called Gene Seberg, and it's yeah. uh, the story oh. of Gene Seberg, and it's uh, uh, at the National Theater, which is very exciting. And Sir Peter Hall, who did Amadeus, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. directing that. Mm -hmm. So I'm. Very excited about is that. Is the title Gene or Gene Seberg? Gene Seberg. Uh -huh. I was going to call it Gene and Marv, but they didn't go for that. <laughs> <laughs> and down the line, time. there is still another project, too, right? That's, way, that's so far down the line. Oh, that really? line has gone from here <laughs> to the left. To the Where are you going to be on Sunday night? I think it's quite Saturday a Saturday night. Saturday, Saturday night. Believe Saturday it or not, night. you know, there was never an overture in Chorus Line, okay? Uh -huh. And I made up an overture, finally. Wait, and I'm going to play it Saturday night at the White House <gasps> for President Reagan and Princess Margaret. No well, that's yeah. a nerd. Very, very nerd. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm going to do audition it for them, huh? Right, and if they like it, it's a good show. <laughs> so you'll be at the White House then yeah. on Saturday night. Well, listen, right. anyway, congratulations. Will you all be down at the Schubert today? Oh, oh really? And indeed. tonight? Oh, Is yeah. the public yeah. invited to come by and take a look at what else? Tickets, I don't know. They're, they're pretty hard tickets. to get. There are going to be parties in Schubert Alley then, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are they going to film this? Are they going to For the archives at Lincoln Center, they're filming this. They're filming this? All right. It's a wonderful day. Congratulations on a great show. Singular sensation. Every little step. Coming back from the news and weather. The, the, the news and weather? Yes. Wow. <laughs> 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 to you. <laughs>